This is somewhat of a slightly different chat today. And it's slightly different because it looks at evidence from a field that you would think is perhaps only at times tangentially related to the nature of trading. Uh, but if you bear with me, I think you'll find that the connections become somewhat blindingly obvious. There is no doubt that all traders at some stage in their career feel anxiety. There is no doubt that we all feel fear about what we are actually doing. And that occurs simply because we deal with the unknown. We don't know what tomorrow will bring, but we have staked part of our financial future on what tomorrow does bring. And dealing with that uncertainty often presents a raft of difficulties for traders. And those difficulties tend to conspire to further impede performance, which in turn raises anxiety. And so traders get caught in somewhat of a feedback loop that they can't get out of. And this occurs because in many ways, they lack the skills to do so. What has prompted this little chat was this little piece that came across my desk. The title of this paper is Effective Mindfulness-Based Programs on Elite Athlete Mental Health, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. Now, that's just a, a somewhat long-winded way of saying that what the researchers have done in this instance is they've collected a raft of studies that conform to a series of statistical parameters that make them relevant. They've then reviewed those studies and assessed them for the impact they have on their question. And the question is, basically, does mindfulness in any way, shape or form enhance or detract from elite athletic performance and mental health? But before looking at what they found, it's probably necessary for me to uh, unpack what my definition of mindfulness is. When you speak of mindfulness, people often get the impression that what you are talking about are groups of monks sitting around in a temple somewhere in Asia contemplating the nature of universe. That to me is a form of deep and very powerful meditation. It is not per se mindfulness as we might expect. Uh, my definition of mindfulness is this, and I think this is the accepted definition, and it's not to be confused with meditation. I think all meditation is mindful by nature, but not all mindfulness is actually meditation. So to me, mindfulness is one of these two definitions. It's the quality or state of being conscious or aware of something. And traditionally, this is fleshed out as being aware of and acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and bodily sensations. So it has a fairly broad definition of simply sitting and sitting with the emotions you feel. So in terms of the study, what I've done is I've snipped out some things that were the reviewers found to be important, but which I think there are pieces within that I, that I think are more relevant to traders. The first is this notion that mindfulness is an innate ability that is underpinned by skills that can be learned, practiced, and enhanced. What I think occurs with traders is this innate ability disappears because we're always future thinking. We're always thinking, what happens if the trade does this? What happens if the trade does that? instead of just sitting there and accepting that the trade will do whatever it's going to do. And we have no control over that. But what we have control over is our reaction to what the trade does. And it is this notion that it can be learned. So this is a learned behavior. Whilst it is innate and it does exist to some degree in everyone, it can be enhanced by practicing it. It is a practiced skill. And I think that's important because one of the things that I think catches people out with, let's use the broad term trading psychology, is that they don't feel that many of the practices apply to them and they don't feel they apply to them because they don't feel they can learn them. The 
second point I found important in this paragraph is that the aim of this study in athletes was to improve their ability to focus on the moment at hand and to be non-judgmentally aware of the thoughts and feelings that arise within them. And this is important because within the mind of a trader, I think there are two voices. There is the inner coach. And the inner coach acts to guide you along the lines of your trading plan, along the lines of your system. It also acts as a review process. For those of you who take the time to print your charts out, write on them, annotate them, and follow up on your trades as they occur in terms of creating a post-mortem, that's your inner coach at work. That is a learning experience. You are getting something from that. And it is here that mindfulness is very powerful because you simply sit there and you undertake the review process in a dispassionate way. The problem is there is a second voice. And the second voice is the inner critic. And the inner critic is destructive, whereas the inner coach is constructive and acts as a learning experience. The inner critic acts as a negative learning experience. And in many ways, I feel, enhances the underlying fear that all traders feel when they undertake trades. If you have an inner voice, which during your review process is simply telling you how stupid you are, how could you make such an idiotic mistake, why did you do that, and any number of a raft of negative statements, then what that is going to do is to prime you not to do that in the future. So instead of it being a learning experience where you move forward with trading, it is a negative learning experience where you move away from trading. You move away from the notion that trading is an endeavour that requires you to be risk-seeking, to accept that uncertainty exists, and to be guided by that uncertainty. If your inner critic is constantly amplifying that, then your natural response is to not to want to do those things that cause those emotions. So you naturally move away from trading. And this is where I see that people over the years use a variety of excuses as to why they're not trading. Things like the market's rigged, I've got the wrong charting program, only insiders win, all of these things. In many ways, I think they are an external representation of their way of presenting what the inner critic is saying to them. And this, I think, is a very important notion. It is that mindfulness programs were effective in improving elite athlete mental health. And that there's a word I want to focus on there, and it's not improving. It is actually the word elite. Trading within the notion of what we do is in many ways an elite endeavour. It's an elite endeavour in many ways, but most obviously from my perspective in that it is an individual endeavour where you are not competing with the market, you are competing with yourself. And the only way you can compete successfully with yourself is to have a series of elite behaviours. Otherwise, we, we lurch back to that notion of the inner critic. Unless you find a way to deal with that, then you will never be elite. In many ways, it is an answer to the question, what is the difference between amateurs and professionals? Well, professionals do what is necessary to not be an amateur, whereas amateurs go out of their way to behave in a way that defines them as amateurs. And in terms of what the study found, as you would expect, it significantly reduced symptoms of stress, psychological distress and anxiety. If we can downregulate all the things we feel and turn the volume down of the inner critic and of all those doubts we have and simply sit with what is occurring, not what we think might occur, what 
not what the negative outcomes might be, then it is somewhat obvious that your overall performance will improve. It won't go backwards. To me, that seems to be a fairly obvious point. And so, from the point of view of athletes, they found that this notion of reducing anxiety and stress improved performance. And that again, to me, seems obvious, that if you can do these things, the stress, anxiety and performance are inextricably linked in any endeavor. If you can reduce the impact of those negative features of the event, then performance will naturally go up. Granted, there is probably an upper limit to how far your performance will go. And this is true with athletes because athletes are, in many ways, constrained by their genetic limits. Traders, to some degree, are probably also constrained by genetic limits. But I think the upside for improvement in traders is so much more than is available to athletes because the constraints for athletes are hard constraints. They are bounded by their own physiology. Traders are bounded by their own psychology. And so if you can open that up in concert with having a methodology that works, there is no point having the world's best psychology in a methodology that doesn't work. Uh, that simply won't get you anywhere at all. You'll probably feel very, very good about losing, but you'll still lose. And this slide is simply about how far the needle shifted. It's a little sum summary slide about this particular review, and it just shows you how far the needle shifted. And for those of you who watched uh, the last video I did on low-hanging fruit, I consider this to be low-hanging fruit. It is not a difficult thing. It takes effort and it takes practice, uh, but it's not the equivalent of having to learn calculus. It is simply learning a skill that you already have. It's enhancing that skill you already have. And you can see that the needle shifted on most of these. You can see there was a very large shift in depression, but depression also had a, a right shift, which is intriguing. And to be honest, I don't fully understand why that occurred. But you'll also see that psychological well-being increased, anxiety decreased, distress decreased, stress decreased. So if you can bring those things to bear in your trading, then you are ahead of the game compared to where you were yesterday. And so in terms of some recommendations, uh, this first one might seem a little bit obtuse, but this is a book you should buy by Joanne Hardy called Stolen Focus, Why You Can't Pay Attention. Part of the difficulty with mindfulness is that people simply can't pay attention. They can't sit. They're constantly distracted. If you can remove those distractions, then you have freed up brain power and emotional energy to deal with those things that are important, as opposed to those things that are trivial. This might seem obvious, but turn the damn PC off. One of the harsh realities of trading, and I, I know this will distress many people's egos, but the market will be open with or without you, and it will open tomorrow with or without you. It will open the day after tomorrow with or without you. You are not that important. So you can switch the PC off, go away, do something useful. Go outside. Do something that is in some way enhancing of the inner skills you are attempting to refine. Sitting and scrolling Fintwit is not really a skill. That's a distraction. And the final thing for many is that just as a meditative practice, and again, Mindfulness is not necessarily meditation, but some people can take the next step and look at that. There are a variety of apps. Uh, this is simply Calm, which seems to be the go-to app at present. You simply drop the app onto your phone, listen to it, sit. And one of the things to note about 
mindfulness slash meditation, whatever you want to call uh, this particular endeavor, is that it is not something that you have to sit and do for hours on end. I think, unfortunately, that is one of the illusions that people have. This can be done in five-minute breaks. It can be done in 15-minute breaks. You don't have to sit there forever and try and find some great sort of source of nirvana within yourself that takes hours every day. These can be very, very short-term breaks. They can be very easy to do when you just switch off and sit. The central issue of this is that whilst you don't want to overdo the sporting metaphors, because I think people overdo that all the time, the psychology of performance is universal. There is no difference performance psychology for elite athletes, for elite traders, for people who are elite in any endeavour. The basic psychology is the same. It's simply a matter of working out that it is important to you and then sitting and practising it. And I would suggest it is as important as sitting there endlessly looking at meaningless charts all day just for the sake that you need to feel busy. I feel you would actually get much more from just sitting and learning how to be mindful than you would from a lot of the activities that you undertake during the day. 